here with Robin Sloan, uh, who's new media director for Current TV at AgTech in Paris. Um, how are you finding AgTech? It's great so far. Um, it's always interesting to see how other countries are sort of thinking about uh, the same things that we're thinking about in San Francisco. San Francisco and Silicon Valley can tend to be a bit of a bubble, um, and so I actually really like to get out of it and just talk to people that are, you know, dealing with the same questions in other places. You had an interesting topic that you were speaking about today. Can you tell us a little bit about that and uh, the context of it? Yeah, I gave a presentation on the future of advertising and I specifically um, sort of imagined myself, imagined all of us at uh, AdTech Paris 2019 instead of 2009 and just trying to sort of imagine what, um, what we would be looking back on, what we would be commenting on over the course of the, the, the next 10 years essentially. And what in particular stood out for you? You know, there's, there's a lot, obviously. I think one of the main things to keep an eye on for the next, frankly, the next year, the next two years, to say nothing of the next ten years, is um, social media broadly, and more specifically, the fact that these days, the conversations that people have about brands and, and products, you know, these are conversations they've always had since, you know, the beginning of products. Like, like, word of mouth has always been really important. It's always been invisible, something we couldn't really observe and something we certainly couldn't quantify. But now that we've got people talking to each other, you know, whether it's on blogs or Twitter or a site like current.com, we can sort of see it. And so rather than just watch it, to be able to actually take some of those conversations and turn them into advertising, um, I think that is just a really interesting kind of direct... Almost like a reality type uh, advertising uh, approach. Yeah, I mean, just as a very concrete example, something we're doing today at Current, and this is you know just a first step in terms of where it could go ultimately, we actually have members of our community make the ads that our brands, our sponsors, put on TV. You know, so whether it's Sony, Toyota, HP, L'Oreal, you know, you name it, big companies, they literally have, you know, current community members, uh, young video producers who are 22, 23 years old, make videos for them that ultimately go on TV. And there's something really special about it because it's not a message that's coming from like a big brand, you know, to you, but actually a message that's coming from one of your peers, you know, a person just like you. And so that's again, that's just the beginning, but some that figuring out where that, yeah, my, I'm on screen, figuring out um, where that could go in the future is really interesting. And then are you, are those ads then just circulated around that person's community or does that ad actually can be socialized against a bigger community? That's a, that's a great question. Um, they actually, in Current's case, we do give them a bigger platform. That's our idea, to take um, the sort of creative work of, you know, uh, an individual, but then put it on TV. I think it works in both contexts. It can be something that, that exactly is, is only shared with sort of your particular social network. But I think the opportunity is to kind of, as an advertiser, as a brand or as a media company, give it a bigger platform. Identify the really good stuff and then kind of give it some gas and, you know, give it a showcase. And how do you see the agencies and the ad world um, dealing with this new phenomena? You know, I think one of the main things is that as an agency, you know, as anybody dealing with advertising, you have to get good at new things. Um, it's not just about being, you know, really creative and getting, good at coming up with, you know, imagery and taglines anymore. It's about understanding communities. It's about being good at listening, uh, identifying super fans and organizing them and getting them to do things on behalf of uh, a brand or a product. Um, so really, the, the, this is one of the things I said in my presentation, the advertising agency of the future needs more stage managers. It needs more community organizers. It needs more, you know, people who are really good at throwing a party, essentially. Um, and it probably needs those people more than it needs traditional creative directors, graphic designers, things like more that. More moving down to the grassroots level and actually understanding the, the person who they are communicating with and actually identifying themselves with them and, and almost acting as a catalyst mm -hmm. to that creation of, uh, of the material. Catalyst is a really good word um, because it means that you're not creating something from scratch. Instead, you're observing what's already happening, but then you're doing the really important work of packaging it together, you know, turning it into something cool and doing that, that part where you're giving it a bigger platform and then hopefully that's what kind of becomes the advertisement. The catalyst is a really good word. And what do you see as the um, critical uh, factors to actually ensuring that this, this idea actually takes off? What, what, what are the blockers? What are the uh, constraints here? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I think as always, uh, you know, throughout the media industry we're seeing people who uh, see the change that's happening, the revolution that's sort of sweeping everything, and it's fundamentally um, terrifying 
You know, it's like you can you can approach it in two ways, and, and they're actually both really legitimate. You can see um, the fact that companies are going out of business, old skills are being rendered, you know, obsolete, and that's that's a hard thing to sort of contend with, especially if you've spent an entire career doing a particular thing. Um, but the other reaction, besides freaking out, is to just see the huge opportunity. And so I think fundamentally, we need more people who see the opportunity and are willing to learn new things, um, to be really entrepreneurial, both in the context of existing organizations and also just in terms of starting brand new organizations. Uh, you know, the reason I like working at Current so much is that it's essentially a startup cable TV network, and there aren't a lot of those these days. Um, I think we need more new media brands um, who are ready to just kind of design it all from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How, how, t tell me a little bit about Current and uh, what's Current at Current. Yeah. Um, so Current is um, a U.S.-based company. It's based in San Francisco, although we have uh, networks in the U.K. and in Italy. Um, we run cable and satellite TV networks. We also have a big website called Current.com, which is sort of a social media platform uh, for people to share stuff they find on the web they think is interesting. Um, you know, one of the newest things we're, we're doing is actually a movie review show, which doesn't sound like sort of the most serious thing, but I think it's actually a really good uh, uh, sort of example of what we were just talking about, being good at observing what's happening out there in the world and then packaging it as something good. The high concept is uh, actually the most interesting commentary on new movies is coming from people, not, you know, movie, it's not two movie critics sitting in a studio telling you what you should think, it's everybody blogging, twittering, commenting about these movies. And if there's a way to harness all that and kind of pull that into a really cool 30-minute TV show that's going to tell you, like, what movie you should go see this weekend, that's really cool. Um, so that's, really, that's our newest show. So it's almost, watch. I mean, you could actually apply that concept to many different facets of life because it's, what is it, it's uh, early bird research. It's, uh, you're, you're getting users to actually either quali qualitatively yeah. research uh, a subject yeah. and then post that for other people to see and make decisions based on those people's uh, viewpoints. Mm -hmm. And if they can identify themselves with the people who are making those comments, then you have a community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, it's really, but uh, not to under estimate how difficult that is. Uh, you know, it's one thing to build a platform that lets people talk to each other, and that's what a lot of technology companies are really good at. There's another level um, that is identifying the signal in the noise, you know, finding the voices that are really interesting, um, finding the patterns in all of that. Um, it's a, a question of technology, but it's also a question of, uh, you know, curation, editorial judgment, community management. And so I think that's something that media companies can really contribute at this point. You know, not just worrying about the technology and, like, building the the form that's going to let me post a message and let other people see it, but finding ways... Yeah. Yeah, and it just and, it, and by itself, it's frankly, as a user, it's hard to process. I mean, I mean, for as cool as these systems are, they're actually really overwhelming. I think a lot of people are kind of going, whoa, I can't deal with all this at this point. And so if you can be a place that helps narrow it all down and serve up just the good stuff, um, I think that's actually really valuable. Excellent. And tell me why Italy? Uh, you know, Italy is actually uh, an interesting case in point. We have one of the, uh, Italy is our youngest network, and it's our smallest team. There's, I think, under 30 people on the staff at Italy. When, when, was, when did you move in? When did you launch Italy? We launched it uh, a little over a year ago. Um, and Italy is actually just a, a great example of how current can be so transformative in, a, uh, in sort of a media ecosystem. Way more than the United States and even more than the UK, the media sort of industry in Italy is just really locked down. There's not a lot of diversity. There's definitely not a lot of independent voices. So we've actually found that the fact that we're an independent network has been really, really meaningful in Italy. People have been really passionate about, yes, this is a voice that's not affiliated with a big company. It's not affiliated with the government. It's an independent voice, and maybe this is actually going to be something that's kind of legit for once. So we've gotten really good feedback. Can you explain to me a little bit about your business model and how you're actually generating revenues? You know, current for as innovative as it is on so many fronts, it's actually a pretty traditional business model. Um, like any cable TV network, um, we get paid affiliate fees by our uh, carriers, you know, DirecTV, Comcast, all the big cable companies, um, and we uh, also sell advertising. But we, again, we try to do advertising in sort of a different way. Uh, we're always interested in, in making everything participatory, even the ads. So tell me, give me an example of, uh, of an advertising technique that's different to the norm. You know, I think the, I think the main thing is that, is that in general we try to pitch sponsors on these viewer-created ads. You know, the idea is, okay, yeah, it's one thing if you can reach our audience by, you know, showing a 30-second spot on TV. 
way better and way more interesting if you can actually engage our community to you know, listen to what you're trying to accomplish. Like our brands actually, they'll actually post a creative brief on our website that says, okay, here's our new product. Here's what we're trying to achieve. Here's some, here's some stuff that's going to be useful, like, uh, you know, some logos, some music, some other creative assets. Have at it. And then people, we get hundreds and hundreds of people uploading sort of their take on this brief. The brand gets to pick their handful of favorites, and that actually becomes the inventory that runs on current TV. And they can take it elsewhere if they want to. We've had brands take those spots and then, like, post them on YouTube and get millions of views. Um, I think it's, frankly, after you see some of these viewer-created ads, you don't even want to watch traditional spots anymore. They're, they're better. They're more authentic. They're funnier. Um, yeah, they're a lot better. I mean, uh, we've seen uh, recently uh, a growing phenomenon whereby if you have a brief of uh, it's to design a website or it's to design a brand essence or a brand identity, you can post it on a number of different sites and you have people entering in uh, concepts or, or ideas and this is taking it to the next level. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great idea. And uh, Are you actually live with these ideas or, uh, or is this something that's coming down the road? No, this is live. We're doing viewer-created ads right now. We've got lots of people. Uh, we've got some assignments posted on our site now. Um, we're always doing them, and we're always looking for more, you know, potential sponsors. And where do you see, last question, where do you see current uh, um, develop, developing uh, this year? What are, the, what are the key priorities, key focus areas for you? We're going to take the model that we've applied to the, uh, to the movie review show, which we're doing in partnership with Rotten Tomatoes, which is sort of a big movie review site. Um, we're going to take that model and apply it to different topics. So um, it won't just be about movies, it'll be about the environment. Um, maybe there'll be one about video games. There'll be one about sort of traditional news and politics. Um, the idea to, to sort of take a community, get them all to pitch in part of the product, but then to have Current do the work of actually putting that together into a really cool show that's on a particular night of the week. So just going to be rolling out more of these shows. Very good. And do you see yourselves expanding into other markets within Europe? I mean, we're definitely interested. It's, it's a tough year, um, and so we're going slow. But, uh, yeah, we've had interest from lots of different countries, and we're going to definitely take them. Are you seeing any economic, um, or are you having any reaction to the economic downturn? Current's doing pretty well. Um, we found that, uh, you know, in this context, um, people are still actually maybe even more interested in innovation. If you're not going to spend, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars on the same old stuff that you always spent it on, um, you're probably willing to set aside some money to try something new. You know, see if there's something that works a little bit better. Um, you know, we kind of saw this with the last great dot-com collapse, uh, you know, out in Silicon Valley. A lot of the most interesting stuff and the stuff that is really, really sort of the, the, the forms the structure of the web today actually came post dot com bust. So in some in a weird way, for as painful as it is, these, more, these recession these these recessions can be really good for innovation. Wonderful. Well listen, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Robin, and uh, hopefully we can hook up in six or twelve months time and uh, and hear more of the good news that you have to share. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye bye.